Hello students, welcome to this video tutorial on multiplying and dividing fractions. Part one, we'll look at multiplying fractions first. Okay, so you've got your video note sheet ready to go. All right, so let's focus on multiplying fractions. There are three strategies, basic strategies, that I want you to try, okay? So the first strategy is that we multiply the numerators. So that's the first strategy, is that we multiply the numerators. If you can write that into your note sheet, The second step, or second strategy, is that we multiply the denominators. So first we multiply the numerators, and then we multiply the denominators. And then finally, a new fraction will be created. So before moving on, we always have to evaluate, and we have to simplify, reduce to the lowest terms okay so reduce and simplify mean the same thing okay all right we ready to work on some problems okay let's have a look at question one let's use these steps or strategies so step one we multiply the numerators question one we have a fraction of two-thirds times three sevenths. So step one, we multiply the numerators. Two times three, we get a new numerator of six, okay? And then step two, multiply the denominators. Three times seven, three times seven is 21. All right, so we took care of step one and step two. Strategy three, we evaluate our new fraction and we see if we can simplify it or reduce it to its lowest terms. So when you look at the numerator of six and the denominator of 21, can you think of a factor that can go into both of those numbers? How about three? So let's show your work. Let's divide the numerator and the denominator by three. So six divided by three is two. And then 21 divided by 3 is 7. Okay? Now, just because you've reduced a fraction one time doesn't mean it's in its lowest terms. So let's look at this new fraction, 2 sevenths. Is there a number that can divide evenly into both the numerator and the denominator? Unfortunately, no. 7 is a prime number. The only number that can divide into 7 is 7. 2 is also a prime number. The only number that can divide into 2 is 2. All right, so this fraction is in its lowest terms. So you see how multiplying is so much easier than adding and subtracting. You don't have to worry about equivalent fractions, finding the lowest common denominator. You just have to multiply and then reduce the fraction at the end. Okay, let's go on to step two. Uh, sorry, question two. All right, this time we're given three fractions to multiply. We use the same steps, all right? Multiply the numerators. One times four and then times 12. So 1 times 4 is 4, and 4 times 12 is 48. Now remember, you should have a calculator when you're working on fractions. You should always have a calculator with you. So 1 times 4 is 4, 4 times 12 is 48. All right, let's now multiply the denominators. 2 times 10 is 20, and then 20 times 15 Okay, 20 times 15 is 300. I use my calculator for that. Okay. All right, so we've got a pretty big numerator and a pretty big denominator. So chances are, okay, because I can see that they are both even numbers, we can probably reduce it. Now, using our divisibility rules, 8 is a... Uh, an even number. Zero is an even number. So I know that two divides evenly into both. But I think I can think of a bigger common factor. So I'm going to try six. Now, there's nothing wrong with dividing by two, but it just reduces the amount of steps if you can get a greater common factor. All right. All right. So let's work this out. 48 divided by six is eight. And 300 divided by 6. Again, you should be working this out with me. 300 divided by 6 is 50. 
Now that reduced this fraction by quite a bit, but I think there is another step, don't you? These are both even numbers, aren't they? 8 and 50. So what is a factor of all even numbers? 2, right? So always show your work here. Okay. All right. So let's divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And 50 divided by 2 is 25. Now, we've already reduced this twice using a factor of 6 and using a factor of 2. Can it be reduced any further? Is there a number that can divide evenly into 4 and 25? No, because the only numbers that can divide into 4 are 4 and 2, and 4 and 2 are not factors of 25. Now, I'm going to show you a different method to solve a question like this, okay? That might reduce the amount of steps at the end of the question. So if we look at these fractions individually, I'm going to rewrite it down here. One half is already in its lowest terms. So one half can only be written as one half. But how about the fraction four tenths? Is that in its lowest terms? Is there a factor that can divide evenly into the numerator and the denominator? How about 2? So if we divide the numerator, 4 divided by 2, we get 2. And if we divide the denominator, 10 divided by 2, we get 5. Okay. All right, how about this last fraction, 12 over 15? Is that in its lowest terms? I think we could probably divide the, the numerator and the de denominator by 3. How about that? So what's 12 divided by 3? 12 divided by 3 is 4. And what is 15 divided by 3? 15 divided by 3 is 5. So what happens is if we reduce these fractions, when we multiply the numerators and the denominators, our new numerator and denominator will be way smaller. Okay, so let's try it. All right, so let's go back to rule number one, step number one, multiply the numerators. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Let's go to step 2. Multiply the denominators. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 5 is 50. Hmm. This fraction looks very similar to this fraction over here. So we know that 8 and 50 are an even number, are even numbers. So let's try reducing by dividing by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 50 divided by 2 is 25. Did we get the same answer as our previous method? Yes, we did. Okay? So one additional strategy is you can try reducing the individual fractions to lower terms so that you have less simplifying to do at the end of the question. It doesn't matter because we got the same answer and that's the whole point, right? You can use math, that's wonderful about math. You can use different strategies, a different amount of steps to get to a final answer. That's why I need you to show me all of your steps. All right, let's go on to number three. Now, number three, there is an additional strategy. So can we type it or write it in here? So the additional strategy is first, change improper fractions, sorry, mixed numbers, change to mixed numbers. All right, so let me put that in bold so you can see it. Now you'll see why, because when we look at this question, we see that we have uh, mixed numbers, sorry. We need to change to improper fractions, I apologize. We need to change mixed numbers to improper fractions. That's what I meant to say. All right. So let's see how that looks. I apologize for making that mistake. OK. So first, let's change to improper fractions. All right. So let's look at the mixed number of 2 and 3 fifths. So we've done this before. So the strategy is we multiply the whole number times the numerator. 2 times 5 is 10. And then we add the numerator. 10 plus 3 is 13. Okay. So we now have 13 fifths. Now remember, 2 and 3 fifths is the same as 13 fifths. 
This is an improper fraction because the numerator is larger than the denominator. This is a mixed number. All right, let's do the same for the second mixed number. We multiply the whole number times the denominator. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 4 is 19. Okay. Now, it just so happens that in this question, the denominators are the same. But the good thing about new, uh, multiplying and dividing fractions is that we don't care. Okay, That doesn't matter. All right, now let's go back to our original steps. Multiply the numerators. Okay, So if we multiply the numerators, 13 times 19, could you use your calculator? 13 times 19, what did you get? I got 247, okay? And hopefully we don't need a calculator for multiplying the denominator, step two, okay? Five times five is 25. All right, so we know we can't leave an answer as an improper fraction. That's why it's called an improper fraction. So you know how to do this as well. So to change back to a mixed number, we do a little bit of long division using our calculators as well okay so how many times does 25 go into 247 it's very easy in your calculator uh, using your calculator you just go 247 divided by 25 and you should get a whole number of nine you should get an answer that says nine point something 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 okay so we know that the whole number is nine it goes in at least nine times nine times 25 is 225 and then when we subtract, we should get a remainder of 22. Okay, so remember, remainder of 22. So remember what we need to do with these three numbers. Okay, so this is the whole number, 9. This is the numerator, 22. And this is the denominator, 25. Now we're not done. After all of that work, we're still not done. We have to evaluate our fraction and make sure it's in lowest terms. All right, well, 22 is an even number, but 25 is not. And the only other factor of 22 is 11. But does 11 go into 25? No, it does not. So we have a final answer here, OK? So these are the types of questions that you're going to see from multiplying fractions. Thanks for paying attention. Good luck. Bye.